The Famous Five Short Stories Collection by Enid Blyton Five have a puzzling time. It was dark and very quiet in Kirin Cottage, almost midnight. The five were all in bed. Yes, Timmy the dog too. He was lying on George's feet, his usual place at night. He was not having a very comfortable time because George, whose real name was Georgina, was so restless. She tossed and turned and groaned, and at last awoke Anne who was in the bed next to her. What's the matter, George? Is your tooth troubling you again? Yes, the brute. Get off my feet, Timmy. I'll just have to get up and walk about. Poor old George. Good thing you're going to the dentist tomorrow. Don't remind me of that. Go to sleep, Anne. I didn't mean to disturb you. All right. See you in the morning. Here, Timmy. Let's have a look out of the window. Oh, look at Kieran Bay. Isn't it lovely? <coughs> and you can just see Kieran Island. My island, Timmy. Oh, what's that? Anne, quick, wake up. Come and see. There's a light shining on Kieran Island. A light, I tell you. Somebody's there on my island. Anne, come and see. What's the matter, George? What did you say? I said there's a light on Kieran Island. Somebody must be there. Without permission, too. I shall get my boat and row out at once. Oh, George, don't be an ass. As if you could get your boat out and row across the bay in the middle of the night. You must be mistaken. Let me see. Now, where's this light? Oh, it's gone. It went out just as you jumped out of bed. Oh, who can be there, Anne? I'll wake the boys and tell them. We'll get my boat. Dick! Julian! Wake up! Something's going on over in Kieran Island. I saw a light there. Oh, do wake up! George's excited voice not only woke up the boys, but her father as well. He sat up in bed in the next room, thinking there must be burglars in the house. Robbers, my dear. Where's my big stick? Quentin, it's only the children. I expect George's toothache is worse. Mm, I'll go and see what they're up to. Now, children, what on earth is this all about? There's a light on Kieran Island. On my island. I'm going to see who it is, and so is Timmy. If no one will come with me, I shall go alone. Indeed, you won't go. Now get back to bed. Rowing to Kirin Island in the middle of the night. You must be mad. There can't be anyone there. You had a bad dream or something. Father, there's a light there. I saw it. Oh, rubbish. Look out of this window. Not a glimmer of any sort to be seen. You dreamt it. I did not. Somebody's there, I tell you. Trespassing. Well, let them trespass. You and the boys can go over tomorrow. I can't. I've got to go to the dentist and have this beastly, horrible tooth out. I must go tonight. Shut up, George. Be sensible. Whoever is there will still be there tomorrow. I'll go over with Dick. Anyway, there's no light there now. You probably made a mistake. Oh, go to bed for goodness sake. Ugh. Oh, Timmy, they make me so angry. Now my tooth's aching worse than ever. Here, George, take these two pills. Your tooth will soon stop aching. Do be sensible, dear. That's one thing old George can't be. Cheer up, George. That tooth will be gone tomorrow, and there won't be anyone on your island, you'll see. And everything will be all right again. The little pills quickly did their work, and in five minutes, George was fast asleep. In the morning, when she awoke, she remembered at once what she had seen the night before. A light on her island. And then she remembered the dentist. 
Her tooth had stopped aching and she told Anne that she wouldn't go to the dentist. She would go to Kirin Island with Timmy and the boys. But her father thought differently and George was packed off with her mother in the car for her visit to the dentist. Timmy went with her. Poor old George. She does get so het up about things. Well, anyone gets upset with a toothache. I wonder if George did see a light on the island last night. You didn't see one, did you, Anne? No, it was all dark there. Honestly, I think George must have dreamt it. Anyway, she can take out her boat this afternoon and we'll go with her and have a good look around. That should satisfy her. Don't you think so, Dick? She may not feel like doing anything except having a bit of a rest. She's had toothache for days now and it does get you down. I tell you what, we three will get the boat and go over to the island this morning. Then, when we find nothing and nobody there, except the rabbits and the jackdaws, we can tell George and she won't worry anymore. Right. Let's go now, straight away. Uncle Quentin will be glad to get rid of us. He's working hard this morning on one of his newest problems. We'll row right round the island and see if there is a boat tied up anywhere or beached. If there isn't, we'll know there's no one there. It's too far for anyone to swim to. They went to the beach to get George's boat and set off in the warm spring sunshine. Here we are, almost there. In and out of the rocks we go. My word, I'm sorry for anyone who tries to come here in the middle of the night, unable to see what rocks to avoid. Not a sign of a boat anywhere. George must have dreamt it all. We'll land at our usual little cove. I bet no one else would know how to get there if they didn't already know the way. The water's like glass here. I can see the bottom of the cove. Right, here we are. All out and let's heave the boat up onto the beach. All together now. Heave. That should do it. Look at the rabbits. Tame as ever. Good thing Timmy's not here. He always looks so miserable when he sees the rabbits because he knows he mustn't chase them. Let's start our search at the old ruined castle. It's quite close. Good idea. <laughs> the jackdaws are as friendly as ever. Look at them coming down to greet us. Well, it doesn't look as if anyone is here. And there was no boat anywhere. So how could anyone have come here? Let's see if there are any signs of a fire having been lit. The flames would have been seen at night. If George saw a light, there must be a lamp or lantern somewhere. Anne, did she see the light high up on the island, as if it came from a tower? She didn't say, but I should think it must be high up. We'll go up the old broken down tower steps as far as we can, shall we? We might see something there, perhaps a lantern. It's possible, I suppose, that someone might have been signalling for some reason. Careful, everyone. These old steps are really crumbling. Well, I can't see anything like a light or any signs of a fire. Nor can I. Let's go and lie down on the grass and watch the rabbits. Hello. Why did the jackdaws all fly up then? And why are they checking so? What frightened them? Funny. We didn't scare them, I'm sure. I suppose there can't be someone else here. Well... We'll walk round the island and examine the rocks sticking up here and there. Someone might be hiding behind one of them. You two go. I'm going to take off my sandals. I love running on the smooth sand in bare feet. I shall have a paddle too. The water's quite warm today. The boys wandered off round the island. Anne sat down and undid her sandals. She set them by a big stone so that she could easily find them again and ran down into the sea. Soon Julian and Dick came back together, having gone all round the island, looking into every cranny. They called to Anne. Hello, Paddler. Is the water nice and warm? We ought to have brought our bathing suits. We haven't seen a sign of a single soul. Better go home again. 
George may be back by now, wanting to tell us about her tooth and what she has been through. Poor George. I'll put on my sandals. That's odd. What has happened to one of my sandals? Dick, do have you taken one? Where have you put it? Sandals? No. We didn't even know where you'd put them. Come on, Dick. Let's help Anne to find it. Well, how silly! I know I put them together just here. I know I did. Anyway, there's no one to take one of my sandals. And even if there were, why take one and not both? <laughs> Perhaps a rabbit took one, or a jackdaw. They're jolly mischievous birds, you know. A jackdaw surely couldn't pick up a sandal. It would be too heavy. And I simply can't imagine a rabbit running off with one. Well, it's not there. We'll have to leave your sandal wherever it is, Anne. We ought to get back. Well, the only thing we can tell George is that we saw no one at all here, but that one sandal mysteriously disappeared. Blow! Now I'll have to spend some of my precious pocket money to buy a new pair of sandals. Blow, blow, blow! Come on. George will have a blue fit if we don't turn up soon. She'll think the owner of the mysterious light has caught us and made us prisoners. Oh, buck up, Anne! They were all soon back in the boat again, and the boys took it in turn to row. Through the crowd of rocks they went, threading their way carefully, and at last came to their own beach. George was there waiting for them. Timmy beside her. Went without me. You really are beasts. What did you find? Nothing, and no one. The island is absolutely empty except for its usual inhabitants, rabbits and jackdaws. Your strange light in the night must have been a dream, George, old thing. It was not. <coughs> you don't know where to look. Now, if Timmy had been with you, he'd have smelt out anyone there. He'd have found the lamp or lantern. He'd have. He'd have. All right, all right. But we didn't have Timmy. How's the tooth, George? Did you have it out? Did it hurt? Blow the tooth! If I hadn't had to go to the dentist, I could have gone with you. And I bet Timmy and I would have found something. I just bet we would. All right, go there then, and take Timmy with you. That's just what I will do. We'll soon find out who's hiding there. I shall go this very afternoon with Timmy. You can come too if you like, of course. But I can't see that you will be much use. Oh, we'll come all right, even if it is only to say sucks to you when you can't find more than we did. George had made up her mind to go off in her boat after she had had her dinner. Timmy sat very close to her, sad that she was cross and upset. It was not a very happy meal. Uncle Quentin was quiet and moody, for his work had not gone well that morning. Aunt Fanny looked worried. George sulked. Timmy kept giving heavy sighs. Even Joanna the cook added a few cross words as she cleared away the plates. I should like to know who's been at the grapes and the oranges. Someone came down in the night and helped themselves. And Miss George, what did you do with the bag of dog biscuits that came from the grocer's yesterday? I couldn't find any for Timmy's dinner. Oh, don't bother, so Joanna. You know where I always put them in the outhouse with the chicken food. Well, you didn't this time, Miss. You can't have looked. Oh dear! Why do all these things have to happen when I have a bad tooth? Well, you certainly shouldn't have a bad tooth now. I thought the dentist. All right, all right. Yes, he did pull it out, but it feels as if it's still there. You'd better have a lie down this afternoon, George. A little sleep will put, put you right. right. <laughs> You've heard me say that before. Well, what with toothache all night and little sleep, it's no wonder poor old George is cross. I am not cross. <laughs> <laughs> Cheer up, old thing. We'll all go and hunt over the island again this afternoon, and I'll expect you'll find a couple of pirates, two or three robbers. A shipwreck sailor.、Uh... No, oh, shut up, you ass! Don't take any notice of me for a bit. I'll be all right soon. And she was. She took herself in hand, helped Joanna with the washing up, and then they went to look for the biscuits for Timmy. Sure enough, they were missing, as Joanna had said. No, I'm sure I put them in the outhouse here. 
I suppose I couldn't have. What have I done with them? Poor old Tim. You'll have to make do with scraps, I'm afraid, till the butcher boy comes with your meat this afternoon. And by the way, Joanna, I did not come down last night and take grapes and oranges. My tooth was much too bad. And I'd like to know something now. Who's been at my big box of chocolates? There's more than half gone. Timmy, have you been at them? Were you so hungry, poor fellow? Well, I must say, if he took them, he was clever to put the lid back. Maybe you ate an orange or two as well, Timmy Dog. Come on, Timmy. Let's go back indoors. Mother, I feel better now. The swelling in my mouth is going down at top speed. I'll be all right to take the boat out with the others. Really, I will. Well, your father does want peace and quiet this afternoon. Go along then, and don't get overtired. You had quite a bad time this morning. Within ten minutes, all the five were in the boat once more. George looked quite herself again. They soon came to the island. George circled it deftly in the boat, being anxious herself to see that no one had hidden a boat anywhere. She pointed to where a great mass of brown seaweed had piled up on the west shore. See what the wind did when we had that terrific gale on Tuesday? Brought in masses of seaweed again. Now we'll have an awful smell when it dries out. Hello. What's wrong with the jackdaws all of a sudden? They're never scared of us. Why are they flying up in such a hurry? There is someone on the island. That's what we thought this morning. But there wasn't. Plenty of rabbits, though. Hundreds. Thank goodness there's one place left where they can live in peace. Well, here we are. Everyone ashore. That'll scare the life out of anyone hiding. Go on, Tim. Bark. Hunt around. Sniff everywhere. It scared the life out of the rabbits. Don't you dare touch them. Heel now, Timmy. Heel. I want you to come round every corner of the island with me. Look at him, snuffling in those bushes. He can smell something there.、Uh, what is it, Tim? Oh. He seems to have lost interest. Look, there is something. Orange peel. Someone must have been here then. We would never leave orange peel about. And I say, what's this? It's a pip. A pip from a grape. Does that ring a bell, anyone? Yes. Joanna said we'd been at the oranges and the grapes. Do you suppose that? No. Who's going to steal a bit of fruit and take it over to the island to eat? That's too far-fetched. Honestly, let's be sensible. What's Timmy doing? He's digging like mad. Hey, Tim! Don't scrape all the sand off the island. Come on, let's go and see. That's odd. He's found a big paper bag. Look at him tugging at it. Oh, it's birds! Goodness, dog biscuits! They are. Look. They're exactly the same kind I bought for him yesterday. I say, isn't this peculiar? Who in the world would want to steal dog biscuits and bring them here, and oranges and grapes? And for goodness' sakes, why? Well, that settles it. You were perfectly right, George. Someone is here, and you did see a light on the island in the middle of the night. But how did they get here without a boat? We'll soon find out. We know he's a thief, anyhow. Tim, go to it. Find him. Find him wherever he is. Smell him out, Tim. Smell him out. And off went Timmy at once, nose to the ground, following the scent of the thief. Now, where would he lead them? And whoever would he find? It really was too exciting for words. Timmy went off at such a speed that the four couldn't keep up with him. He raced off round the castle, nose to the ground, barking loudly. He'll certainly warn anyone in hiding that he's on their track. Where in the world can they be? We've hunted everywhere. 
Over the sand and onto the rocks went Timmy, right up to where the seaweed was piled high in great masses by the wind and the waves. He stopped and began to sniff anxiously. He's lost the trail. It's the smell of seaweed that has put him off. Or else, whoever was here came in a boat at high tide, which would bring it to the shore, and has sailed away again now the tide has gone out. There wouldn't be any trail to smell then. Honestly, there doesn't seem to be anyone in hiding, and now that Tim is stumped, I feel we're too late to find whoever it was. Timmy, sniff around again. Go on, you may pick up some other trail. Why does he sound so fierce? Really angry. What is it, Timmy, old thing? Perhaps he doesn't like the smell of whoever has been here. Let's sit down for a bit and watch the rabbits and jackdaws. Do you? Did you bring any biscuits? I brought some barley sugars and Dick's brought some chocolate in his pocket. <laughs> I hope it won't be melted. George wanted to go on hunting, but the others felt it was no use. If Timmy had found the scent and couldn't follow it, no one else would be able to. Anyway, probably the trespasser was far away by now, safely in his boat. Anne chose a sunny corner by an old ruined wall and they sat down. Soon the rabbits came out as tame as ever. The jackdaws came down too, hoping for a titbit. Suddenly one jackdaw ran at a baby rabbit and gave it a hard peck in the back of the neck. The tiny thing fell over, dazed, and all the jackdaws came round in excitement. Oh, they'll all peck it now. Shoo, you birds! The poor little thing has crawled under those bushes. We'll have to get it out to make sure it's not really hurt. Come on, Dick. I'm being torn to pieces by these thorns. The rabbit's gone, Anne. I think it's found a rabbit hole and gone down it. I expect its mother's down there. She'll lick it better. Let's go back and finish our sweets. Look, half the biscuits have gone and two of the chocolate bars. Surely the jackdaws couldn't have taken them so quickly. There's a broken biscuit over here. Look, it must have been dropped by whoever stole them. I say, what a source to come right up here to where we were sitting and take the things just when our backs were turned. I didn't hear a thing. Nor did Tim, or he would have barked. Whoever it was must have come up quietly as a mouse. Let Timmy sniff around. He'll pick up the scent. It will be very fresh. He seems to be following some sort of trail. That's strange. Now he's stopped, as if the trail has come to an end. Look, Timmy. Trails don't finish all of a sudden. People don't take off in mid-air. There's a tree nearby. Do you think whoever it was could have climbed up into it? Anne, dear, there is nobody up the tree. I've looked. I know. We'll leave some biscuits and the bag of barley sugars here and go behind the big gorse bush over there and hide. Maybe the thief, whoever he is, will come along and take those. He seems to have a sweet tooth. Good idea. Come on, everyone. And you too, Timmy. And not a sound from anyone, mind. They went behind the gorse bush and waited. Dick peeped out once or twice, but the bag of barley sugars remained untouched. Then suddenly, Timmy gave a low growl leapt out from behind the bush and ran at something. Everyone followed in excitement. Who was it? There was nobody there. But up one of the branches of the nearby tree sat the thief, a barley sugar clutched in his hand, chattering angrily. Good gracious! It's a monkey! A little monkey! It was he who took the other things. Wherever did he come from? Oh, he's jumped onto the broken wall and disappeared. Well, what do you think of that? A monkey? Somebody must have brought him here. But why? And is that somebody still here? Or has he gone? I bet it was that monkey who came and stole my sandal this morning. Of course. My word, this is a puzzle. Well, what do we do next? Well, there's one thing we do know. And that is... 
A monkey wouldn't light a fire or a lamp at night on the island. That must have been done by a human being, and he must still be on the island if his monkey is here. He surely wouldn't go away and leave the little thing to starve. Oh no! It's such a dear little creature. It had a most comical face. Did you notice? Thank goodness it left us most of the barley sugars. Let's have some before anything else happens. Buried dog biscuits. A monkey that steals food and sandals. By the way, let's go and have a look at where we left those dog biscuits. Maybe they've gone as well. They went off to look, but no, there were the scattered biscuits. Timmy helped himself to a few again, and a loud crunching filled the air. The jackdaws hopped near, hoping to pick up a few crumbs. Timmy ran at them and then stopped and put his nose to the ground. He had picked up the same scent as before. Follow the trail again, Tim. You may do better this time. Go on. That's a dog, on the island too. Whatever next? Where is he? Oh, quick! He sounds as if he's in trouble. What's happening? Quick, Julian! Quick, Timmy! Poor thing! There he goes, howling again. We must find him. We must. The five set off in the direction of the howls. Timmy racing ahead anxiously. He knew far better than the others that a dog was in sore trouble. A howling of that kind meant not only pain but terror. But how did a dog come to be on the island and a monkey too? Timmy was as puzzled as the children. Julian was now in front of the other three, and was heading for the seaweed-spread shore on the west of the island. George suddenly gave a cry and pointed. There's the monkey again. He's seen us. He's racing away. Maybe he'll lead us to wherever the dog is. The dog stopped howling. I'm sure he must be somewhere near here. Hello. What's the monkey doing? Good gracious! He's running over the seaweed. He'll slip into a pool and drown. I must go after him. No, George, that seaweed is slippery. It's too dangerous to go out on those rocks. We know the sea is very deep in between. Look at that little monkey. Where on earth does he think he's going? The monkey came to a rock that was absolutely covered with thick masses of seaweed flung there by the surging, wind-blown tide. He had no sooner arrived than a most extraordinary thing happened. A small mass of seaweed moved, and out of it came something that made the five stare in utter disbelief. It was the brown and white head of a big dog. The five stared, unable to move. The head suddenly opened a great mouth and howled dismally. In a trice, Timmy was over the seaweedy rocks, barking for all he was worth, as if to say, "Hold on, friend, I'm coming." And then another surprising thing happened: a second head poked up from under a covering of seaweed, and a voice shouted loudly, "Tell your dog to keep off! Mine will fight him and clear off all of you." The five were so full of amazement. That they stood like dumb creatures, unable to say a word. The second head was still poking out of its seaweedy hiding place, the head of a small boy. Julian really could hardly believe his eyes. Hey, you there in the seaweed? Come on out. We shan't hurt you. If you want help, we'll give it to you. Come on out and tell us what you're doing. All right, but if you try to catch me. I'll set my dog on you. He's a crossbred Alsatian, and he could eat your dog in a jiffy. We shan't do anything to hurt you or your dog. We heard him howling, poor thing. He's terrified of being under the seaweed. Come on out. And then the seaweed pile was heaved up and down, and out came a scraggy, wet boy of about eleven. He pulled the seaweed off the dog. The great animal shook itself and gave one more miserable howl. Timmy leapt lightly over the seaweed and ran to the great Alsatian, his long tail wagging in welcome. The Alsatian gave a little growl and then an apologetic bark. 
he wagged his wet tail, and then, side by side with Timmy, ran up the shore to the waiting children. The boy came scrambling along next, the little monkey now chattering on his shoulder. The boy looked half scared, half sulky, and stared at them defiantly. George spoke to him first. What are you doing on my island? Nothing. I just came here with my dog and monkey. But, well, for a little holiday. Well, how did you come here? We didn't see any boat. I didn't come in a boat. Well, what did you come in, then? I shan't tell you. If I did, you'd take it away from me. And, and... Oh, oh don't <laughs> cry like that. It's all right. We're your friends. We like your monkey and your dog. Tell us what's the matter and we'll help you. Soon they were all sitting down, the monkey on the boy's shoulder, the dog close beside him. Even Timmy sat as close to the boy as he could, upset because of his tears. Have a barley sugar. Take two. That's right. Now, tell us what's been happening. Why did you come here? And how? There's not much to tell. My name's Bobby Lohman. I live with my grandpa in Kirin Village. My mother and father are dead, and I'm on my own, except for Chippy the monkey and Chummy, my Alsatian. I've run away, that's all. No, that isn't all. Tell us everything, Bobby. Oh, well, it's not much. But Grandpa hates Chippy, my monkey, because he steals things, and Chummy costs a lot to keep, and, and you see, he bit someone last week, and Grandpop said he was to be put to sleep. Oh, Chummy, killed? Why, he's my best friend. There's nobody he loves better than me. You don't know how kind and good he is. He sleeps on my bed at night, and he licks me when things are bad. He... <laughs> <laughs> See? See what I mean? The way he licked me. He loves me. He's the only person who does. And I won't have him put to sleep. Well, would you have this nice dog of yours killed? No! Never, never, never! You're quite right to run away, Bobby. I'm glad you came to my island. Very glad. You and Chippy and Chummy can live here as long as you like. We'll bring you food each day. We'll... Steady on, George, old thing. Don't make promises we can't keep. Let's go back to Kieran Cottage and tell your mother about this. She'll know what's best to do. Bobby can stay with us, perhaps, till things are settled. Oh, what fun to have another dog and a monkey as well as Timmy. Bobby, how did you come to the island if you didn't have a boat? Oh, that was easy. I've got one of those floating beds that you blow up, and Chippy and I sailed on it with a spade for an oar, and Chummy swam alongside. It's buried in the sand so that nobody would see it, but I hadn't any food, so... So, you crept into our house last night, and took a bag of dog biscuits for Chummy, and some fruit for Chippy. Well, what about yourself? Oh, I've been eating dog biscuits... I took some chocolates too and ate those. I'm sorry about the stealing. I was sort of desperate, you know. I'll pay you back for everything I took. Come on, let's go back home. Come along, we'll get our boat. The five went back to where they had left George's boat and took Bobby, Chippy the monkey and Chummy the Alsatian with them. Timmy was very kind to them all and wagged his tail hard the whole time to show just how friendly he was. I'm a bit scared of seeing your mum and dad. You sure they won't send me off to a home? To prison? Or something like that? Chummy here would fret like anything if I went away from him. I don't think you need worry. And I wouldn't be surprised if your grandpa was very pleased to hear you are safe. Hmm. <laughs> oh, look at Chippy. He's taken Dick's handkerchief. Hey, Chippy. You're not to take things from people. I've told you that before. Ooh, that reminds me. You brought this red shoe to me this morning. Does it belong to any of you? Oh, it's mine. I missed it this morning. Oh, good. Now I shan't have to buy a new pair. Chippy, you really are a monkey. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt about that. George's mother was most astonished to see a monkey a dog and another boy added to the five when they arrived at Kirin Cottage. Who are all these? I don't mind the dog, George, but I will not have a monkey running loose in the house. He can sleep in the shed, Mother. 
Please don't say he can't. Mother, this is Bobby. He ran away from his grandfather, who wanted to put his lovely dog to sleep. Bobby, Bobby Loman, do you mean? Why he was in the papers today, and a picture of the dog and the monkey too. Bobby, your grandfather is very unhappy and worried. You were a silly boy to run away just because of an upset. I'm sure your grandfather would never have had your dog destroyed. He only said that in the heat of the moment when he was very cross. Mother, I'm sure I should run away if you threatened to do anything to Timmy. So I do understand why Bobby ran away to my island. Well, sailed away. Oh, so that's who it was on your island last night. Well, well, well. You five do seem to run into adventure, don't you? How did he get there? And what was the light you saw? I floated on my airbed. Oh goodness, I've forgotten it. It's still on the island. The light George saw was my torch, I expect. I was looking for somewhere safe to sleep. I never imagined anyone would see the light of a torch in the dark of midnight. Oh, you don't know George. If anyone happened to strike even a match on her beloved island, she'd be sure to be looking out of the window at that very moment and see the flare. Then we'd all have to go rushing off to find out what it was. Shut up! It's a good thing I did look out of the window last night. If I hadn't. Goodness knows what would have happened to Bobby and the monkey and Chummy. They might have starved to death. Well, we still had plenty of dog biscuits left. They weren't bad, but very hard. I got Chummy to bite mine in half for me. Oh, how very disgusting! Now let's think what is best to do. Is your grandfather on the telephone, Bobby? He is. Good. Write his number on this bit of paper. I'll ring him up at once, and then you can go home. I hope you'll tell him you're sorry for being such a silly boy. Ah,、uh, mother, I've asked Bobby to stay the night. Mother, the monkey's so sweet, you'll love him, and Chummy is marvelous. You should have seen him with Timmy. They were like old friends at once. Very well, Bobby can stay the night. If I had a tail, I'd wag it really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Things were soon sorted out. Mrs. Kirin rang up the police to tell them Bobby was safe. Then she rang up his grandfather and told him the news too. The old man was so relieved he could hardly thank Mrs. Kirin enough. I wouldn't have had his dog put to sleep. I just said that to make Bobby more careful with Chummy. Now that the dog's grown so big and strong, he must be properly trained and must never bite anyone. Bobby's too easy with him. I'll send the dog to a trainer, and when he comes back, he'll be quite all right, and Bobby can have him again. That sounds like a very good idea, Mister Loman. Goodbye. Well, Bobby, your grandfather is going to send Chummy to a trainer. I just won't let Chummy go to a cruel trainer. There, you care more for your own feelings than for Chummy's well-being. Don't you want a dog who's safe, even with a small child? Don't you want a dog who'll obey you at once and be a credit to you, like Timmy is to me? All right, all right. Don't bite my head off. Sounds as if you ought to go to a trainer too, going round snapping at people. Mother, I don't want Bobby to stay the night after all. Oh, look at that monkey! He's taken a banana from the dish and he's peeling it just like a human being. Aunt Fanny, do look! Isn't he sweet? In the end, Bobby was allowed to stay the night. And slept downstairs in the kitchen on a couch, with Chippy cuddled up beside him and Chummy on his feet. Upstairs, George was in bed with Timmy on her feet, talking about the excitements of the day with Anne. How's your tooth? Tooth? What tooth? Oh, the one I had out. Goodness, it does seem ages ago since this morning. I do believe a new one is growing already. I wish I had teeth like Timmy. Snowy white, strong, fierce. I'd like to be able to show my teeth like Timmy when I'm really angry. <laughs> well, you almost manage it now. I say, what's the matter with Timmy? He's pretty restless tonight. Look, he's gone to the door. He wants to go out. All he wants is to go and have a talk with Chummy. <laughs> All right, Tim. You can go down to the kitchen and sleep with Chummy if you like. I suppose you think he might be lonely. 
My word, I guess he was scared when he had to hide under that wet, smelly seaweed. Timmy pattered downstairs as soon as the bedroom door was opened. He scraped at the kitchen door, and Bobby got up to open it. He was surprised and pleased to see Timmy, who licked him lavishly, and then went to lie beside the pleased Alsatian. It wasn't often Timmy had a doggy visitor, and he meant to make the most of it. George took one more look out of the window before she got into bed, and then gave a sudden exclamation. Anne, I do believe there's a light on Kieran Island. Anne, come and look. Don't be an idiot. You don't think we're going to start this adventure all over again, do you? It's finished, George. Not just beginning. Get back to bed. It was a light, but only a shooting star. Oh, what a pity. I'd have liked another adventure. Wouldn't you, Anne? But Anne was fast asleep, dreaming of monkeys, red sandals, seaweed, big dogs and orange peel. Well, I'm not really surprised at that. Are you? <laughs>